Good afternoon, and welcome back to Alabama State University for another historic occasion as we welcome another championship winning coach to the university. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce interim athletic director, Melvin Hines. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. During this entire process, the name Brian Jenkins is one that continued came up. Everywhere I turned, everyone I talked to, everyone kept mentioning Brian Jenkins. Brian Jenkins comes to Alabama State with a tremendous pedigree. As a player, representative performer, as a wide receiver, kick returner at the University of Cincinnati. As an assistant coach, 16 years as an assistant coach on the FBS level and in professional football. West Kentucky, Eastern Illinois, Bowling Green, Frankfurt Galaxy, Louisiana Lafayette, and Rutgers. But what's even more impressive, the pedigree as a head coach, five years as a head coach, won a share of four conference titles, three national playoff appearances, two FBS wins, not to mention one win over our Hornets in the MEAC Squack Challenge in 2012. <laughs> but what's more important about what goes on on the field, as a program shaper, a developer and leader of men, classroom successes, his program APR scores have exceeded the NCAA minimum. Brian Jenkins has success synonymous for what we're looking for at Alabama State. We look forward to him bringing that success to Alabama State University. So without further ado, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce the new coach at Alabama State University, Coach Brian Jenkins. Thank you. First, I would like give, to give honor to the one that sits high and looks low, the creator of all things, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one that has blessed me abundantly above all that you and I could imagine. And without him, I could not stand here today with confidence. I'd like to thank all those people of the past who have helped me become the man that I am, all those who have said daily prayers for me, all those who have stood in the gap to protect me. I'd like to thank Mel. He's done a tremendous job during this time. I tell you what, he called me and we talked and we went at it and we went back and forth and we fought. And I tell you what, he told me, I'm not going to let you go. We're, we're going to land you. This, this is what we do at Alabama State. And I can truly say, if this is the AD that I have a chance to work with, then I see great things in the future. Right. I really do. I like to thank those who, I'm not going to mention by name, but behind the scene, phone calls and emails and just encouraging words of comfort that they gave me to help me make my decision. I'd like to thank the president who I spent some time with today and I can tell you a truly phenomenal and blessed woman, a woman of prayer, a woman of distinction, a true leader and, and one that I will not mind following. And I tell you what, to have a leader like her in place it's very encouraging, and it, and it excites me. I'd like to thank Melendez, a personal friend who a lot, a lot of people don't know was re responsible for me going to Bethune-Cookman, and also had a lot of say-so uh, with me coming here, just a lot of the conversations that me and him had daily, and 
and some things that I wanted to hear and sometimes I didn't want to hear from him, but he still called anyway. And, and, and you know, I mean, I would get phone calls in the middle of the night, Alabama State, brother, click. Alabama State, brother, click. So, hey, Melinda, did you call me? No, no, I didn't call you. Alabama State, brother, click. But uh, he really, really did a phenomenal job and, and just like to thank him too. And uh, the opportunity is now. The opportunity is here. And it's time for us, not I, but us, to get it done. We got enough in place. We got enough in place. It's some work that can still be done, but we have to do it. I don't want anybody to look at me as the answer. You gotta first look at yourself. Then let's come together and let us get it done because we all deserve it and if we want it then we will put in to do the job and it has to be done in many different areas and we all know that so if we know that and the opportunity is here then let's get to work and let's do it and it's just simple as that it's no magic trick to it it boils down to us that's what it boils down to us this is our program not my program, this is our program. Those who paved the way for us before we got a chance to stand here, those who are here today, who had a part of building this, those who will come after us. This is our program. My grandfather taught me a long time ago, what you put into it is what you will get out of it. So it's time for all of us, us, Hornet Nation, us, to put into it so we can get what we want out. In closing, I would like to honor my, my beautiful daughter who uh, accompanied me. She's the general manager. So uh, <laughs> she had to give approval of everything, you know, and she's been on, <laughs> she's been on mail all day, he'll tell you. And uh, she was even telling me what my opening statement was gonna be when I came out. But my beautiful daughter, who I love so much, I'm so proud of her, she's a freshman. Um, at, in, in Atlanta and, and doing good, really good. She's at Spelman College and uh, studying to be a pediatrician. And I, and I thank God for her. I do. I love her dearly. I, I really do. I come to work every day to make her proud as a father as well as my other kids. But, honey, I, I thank you and I appreciate you and uh, I love you. I really do. Daddy really does love you. So uh, with that being said, like I said, it's up to us and what we do. So let's put our minds together. Let's put our hearts together. Let us all stay prayerful that God guides us and let us, us, let's get to work. Thank you. This time we'll take questions from the media only at this point for Coach Jenkins. Questions from the media only at this point for Coach Jenkins. Coach, after all your success down at Bethune Cookman, what made the right what made it to be the right decision to come to Alabama State now? You know, that's that's funny. I've been asked that question uh, so many times. You know, the one thing I believe in is assignments. And I had an assignment five years ago to go to Bethune Cookman and God gave me a plan of what to do. He told me, You go into this program, I want you to build men, and if you do it my way, and wins will follow, and, and I award you victories. Well, that assignment is over, and God has called me to another assignment, and that assignment is here at a ASU. So it's very simple. When God speaks, you move. You ask no questions, and uh, that's why I'm standing here today. All right. All right. All right. Coach, there's been obviously high expectations here, and the signal win, it's not just swag and hasn't done it. What do you see that you can bring that's going to get well, first, let me say this, and, and I'm sorry that I didn't mention this earlier. First, I want to thank Coach Barlow. You know, um, <laughs> Coach Barlow did, did a good job. He did the best that he can do, that he can, that, that he can do. And uh, he's a hornet. Yeah. And, and I want him to know, and I want everybody to know, I will continue to honor him. I really will. And I'm going to try to... Uh, just do things a little bit better. 
that's it. And uh, instill some discipline and try to get more out of our guys and maybe preach things in a different manner or a different way with a different style and be prayerful. And if we do those things and keep God included, then I don't know how we, we could fail. You know, Psalms 23 and 6 says that goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And uh, if I stand on that, then what we want done will already be done. So that's how I see it. Well, you know, uh, I got some guys in mind, but to be fair to the gentlemen who have been here and who have been with these young men, I think they deserve uh, time to sit down and talk and show me their talents. And I will give each and every one of them the opportunity to uh, show me their talents. And then I'm going to take strong consideration into keeping some of those, those guys. And uh, I'm going to search the nation and bring in the best coaches that fit ASU and fit the goal that we're trying to reach. So I got a couple different ideals that I'm juggling around, and uh, but I'll have everything in place very soon. Coach, talk about uh, offensively, defensively. Has any of that even been bounced around? I mean, yeah. the issue with a lot of shotgun, hurry-up stuff in the past, mm -hmm. is there going to be similarities to that? Yeah, we're going to play football. <laughs> <laughs> the ball, we're going to block, we're going to run the ball, we're going to throw the ball, on defense, we're going to line up and tackle the ball and try to intercept the ball, sack the quarterback, we're going to we're gonna play football. You know? That answers your question. <laughs> coach Jacobs, yes. what intrigues you about coming to the Southwestern Athletic Conference to be a head coach? Well, what intrigues me the most is just ASU. ASU is a phenomenal university. I, I think it's a hidden gem. I really do. When you walk around town and, and, and get greeted by genuine people who enjoy each other, when you have leadership like you have here, you know, when you have the facilities that you have, when you still have the potential of growth, when you have people who have a vision and have determination and who are never satisfied and want more, that intrigues you, that should intrigue you enough. And because of that, that, that's a major attraction to me. And most of all, when you have the hearts, the minds, and the soul of everybody who say, we want to be the best, not one of, that's, that's intriguing. And I think that's intriguing enough for anybody to say, you know, I would love to be the head coach at Alabama State University. What are you seeing the players Well, I, I've looked at the roster and I've watched a couple games, and it lets me know that we are capable. If they are willing and we are capable, then nothing else to do but to get it done. So we're going to, you know, teach them our scheme, our system, our philosophy, and our way of doing things. We're going to get our guys to understand that trained behavior, you know, becomes instinct, and instinctively they got to operate off of their trained behavior. We're going to get our guys to understand, you know, they got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, we got to get them to understand they can never be satisfied. They always got to thirst for more. They got to finish things with authority, you know. And uh, if we can implement those things uh, into, you know, what I see in the players now that they're capable, um, then we just got to bring in the process of them being willing to do it all the time, not some of the time. And if we if we can do those things as a coaching staff. I think we have a chance of being very successful. They interviewed Southern Jackson UAB. I think a lot of people kind of felt like the next step for you was going to be maybe an FIU replacement at the next level. What was it about ASU that felt like this was a step up for you? Well, it's, it's very simple. I think in all those other interviews, I was trying to make the decision. And that's where I went wrong. When I was at Rutgers, you know, God made the decision of where he wanted me to be if he wanted me to stay at Rutgers or go to Bethune. And I listened to him. I went to Bethune and had success. All the other universities are very well-respected universities. And, uh, but I think I was trying to make the decision. And the decision is not mine. So why ASU? you got to talk to the man upstairs. He just told me to go, and I, I listened to him. <laughs> Um, 
I, you know, as I, you know, I, I, my mom is a, is a preacher and, and, and ministry runs deep and, and to my family and, you know, I'm no saint, but one thing I, I know, I know a little bit of the word. I was raised in the church and so I know a little bit of the word, you know, when, when he sent Moses to do something he didn't explain, you mm. know, um, when he told Noah to build the ark, he didn't explain. And uh, there's many others that he talked to that he didn't explain. So when he told Jesus, hey, if you go to the cross, he didn't explain. So I'm going to follow those, those, those guys who did what God asked them to do. And in the end, they ended up with him. So I'm going to try to end up with him and not ask a question or ask him to explain. standpoint is late in the game. Um, a lot of people have already made verbal commitments. You you were already talking to players when you're at Bethune. How deep does those roots run and where are you in the process with some of those players and with some of those players follow you to Montgomery? Well, um, you know, some of those players at Bethune that we recruited while we were at Bethune, um, I will respect that they had an interest at Bethune while I was there. I will not go after those players. I will not pursue those players. I would have respect for Bethune Cookman University. Just let me finish. But if those players contact me and show interest in ASU, I'm obligated as the head coach here at ASU to show them interest as well. Specifically high school players, not the yes. players at Bethune. Yes. Specifically high school players that are you were in the process of recruiting. Yes, and that's what I'm, that's okay. what I'm talking okay. about. That's what I'm speaking on. If uh, the high school players, okay. and let me be a little bit more clear, the high school players that we were pursuing at Bethune Cookman, I will not pursue those players, but if those players reach out to me or my, my coaching staff here, then I'm obligated as the head coach to show interest in those players. Uh, it's a lot of those players that I would love to, uh, to be here at Bethune. I mean, I'm sorry, to be here at ASU that we were recruiting at Bethune. But let me say this, I think there's a difference too, and this is why, and, and I spoke with a lot of people about this. Alabama is a powerhouse football state. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people say Florida, you know, California, Texas, but they don't come into Alabama like they should. If we recruit a 100-mile radius north, south, east, and east and west, we can attract enough players to build a program. I have some work to do. I'm unfamiliar with the territory of Alabama, but I'm not unfamiliar with recruiting. So I got some work to do. We will hit the road running. Um, you know, we're in the process of recruiting some guys right now. I will take some of the consideration from uh, the staff members that, that, are, that are on board. Uh, and, there, and there are some Florida players and some out-of-state players that I think will fit as well. But I think the number one thing we need to do is sell ASU to Alabama. And if we can do that in the right manner, I think we'll be successful. So I'm going to put our ground roots of recruiting in the state of Alabama. Any other questions? Was Coach Melendez more of a nuisance or a friend? <laughs> Man, you put me on the spot, didn't you? Um, is, it a way, is there a word where you can say both in one, you know? Maybe, maybe like family member, relative, something like that. No, Coach Melendez is a, is a tremendous friend. I always, I, from the day I met him and we talked, I told him he was a football, football coach, coaching baseball, you know? But uh, I tell you what, let me tell you, this guy, has sold this university to me like no other. And he believes in, in the vision. And uh, he's, he's one of the main ingredients why I'm standing here, because he convinced me on some questions that, that I had that only friends would ask each other. And uh, I'll tell you what, everything that he has brought to me thus far has, has, has been true. The people here, just in this short time, have treated me and my daughter like we've been here since the day we were born and uh and those are some of the things that that he he said you know hey you're going to get here and you're going to be treated like you've never been treated before i'm telling you and uh it just excites me even more in additional questions from the media that's it oh, man, that's easy. That's no in closing i thank you guys i appreciate it i thank god for having the opportunity I thank you for, for your vision and seeking me out to bring me here. 
I, I thank the president for approving everything. I thank all those other members that, that I won't say by name, but they had a big influence. And I thank you all. I thank you all for allowing me into the Hornet family. And like I say, it's up to us to get the results that we want. Thank you. At this time, we'll have full opportunities again with A.D. Hines and head coach Jenkins. We'll have sidebars for the media, and afterwards, coach Jenkins will greet all of you individually if he can. Thank you for coming.